Hi guys, what's going on? Today I wanted to talk about how your application is actually being deployed to Vercel. And some of the things that I hope you'll learn in this video is how Vercel actually takes the source code of your project and splits it into different components. So those components are serverless functions or edge time functions, depending on what runtime you choose to use. So that's another thing that we're going to cover in this video, basically what a runtime is, what a runtime environment is. Uh, there's other components such as images, optimized images, and also static resources that Vercel actually splits your source code into. I wanted to briefly talk about their edge network and how it uses Anycast IP address routing to serve your application to a server nearest to the user. Some other things are AWS and Kubernetes containers that Vercel uses under the hood in order to uh, spin up different services that are required for your application to be seen live. And lastly, I wanted to talk about basically really understanding what a proxy is. So yeah, that's what we'll be covering today and I try to keep every video high paced. So if you guys would like to see something slow or slower, just let me know in the comment section. I'm open to feedback. Uh, but yeah, without delaying any further, let's uh, get into the video. So in order to understand the content of this video, we first need to understand what a runtime is. So a runtime describes software or instructions that are executed while your program is running, especially those that you did not write yourself. So if you look at the example that I've built here, this is kind of a JavaScript runtime environment, and it shows all the necessary components that JavaScript needs to actually run the code. So for example, the memory heap, the call stack, the garbage collection, and how that all interacts with web browser APIs using the event loop. So think of a runtime as the code required to implement the features of a language. So let's just wrap this all in one term, which we will call the JavaScript runtime environment. So another classic example of a runtime environment is Node.js. And what Node.js allows us to do is it allows us to run JavaScript outside of the browser in environments like, for example, server applications or in mobile applications. So actually before 2009, when Node.js was invented, JavaScript could only run client-side in a web browser application. And Node.js isn't the only runtime environment that is built on top of the V8 engine. Another runtime that we're going to discuss today that Vercel uses is called the Edge runtime. And it uses kind of a subset of APIs that make sense on the server and that allows for more efficient and less costly function calls. All right, so now that we know actually what a runtime environment is and we know about the JavaScript runtime environment, a Node.js runtime environment, and also the edge runtime environment, we can start to take a look at how Vercel actually deploys our applications. So normally we're gonna have a local repository that is connected to some GitHub repository. And whenever we make pushes or changes to the GitHub repo, Vercel is tracking that or monitoring that GitHub repo. And if it detects any changes, it will make two post requests. And those post requests are gonna go inside of this AWS container that Vercel uses. And the way to think of this AWS container is basically just a container of a bunch of AWS services. And one of the post requests it makes is to a static storage on AWS. So this is just a highly efficient, very scalable, uh, very secure data storage form that essentially stores the latest result of your source code. So after this post request has succeeded and your source code has been stored in the, in the static storage, it then makes a second post request to actually start building and deploying your application. And here basically some validation checks happen to make sure that the user is actually capable of uh, making a build and starting a deployment. And if all of those pass, then your application gets posted to some kind of global queue hosted on Vercel that anyone who's made a recent deployment in any project around the world gets added to this queue. And once your project reaches the front of the queue, Vercel actually starts using their functions to deploy and build your application. So now you've actually patiently waited, the queue is over, your project, it's your project's turn to start being processed, basically. What happens is Vercel's resources, their servers, they start spinning up a AWS build container that will basically represent your project in a way that Vercel can understand and deploy it to the web. So the way it does that is it transforms your source code into a compatible build code that Vercel can use. So just some other form of code that um, Vercel's infrastructure understands. And it also provisions the resources that are required for your web application. And this is what I talked about in the beginning of the video, which is those four kind of different resources or components that your project gets split into. So one of them is again, another static storage, which would just be any static pages. It also splits it up into serverless functions, which you can see here, or what you see at the bottom, which is which are edge functions. Now the difference between these two functions, which are just Vercel functions, they're called, 
um, is what runtime the code is running on. So a lot of people don't know this, but if you go to configuring the runtime for Vercel functions, it explains you how you can actually configure your functions and components to run on specific runtimes. So for example, if you want the runtime to be Node.js, you can just specify that. And then this get request will be considered by Vercel to be a serverless function. So any function that runs on the Node.js runtime is called a serverless function. And any function that runs on the Edge runtime, which is kind of like this minimal subset of web APIs that's just a bit faster than Node.js, is considered to be an Edge function. And the reason why Vercel does this is because you only pay for the compute that your users actually use in your application. Because whenever a request gets made or a function that needs to be called, Vercel is just going to spin up a serverless or edge function to handle that request and then return the response to the user instead of having a server that's 24 seven up and running and might be not handling any requests at all. Okay, so at this point, your application is stored securely somewhere. And also all of the pages and components are stored in either static storages or just a response from different serverless or edge functions that you can choose to specify. So that's where we're at now. And now we want to look at what actually happens when a user makes a request. So when a user makes a request to an application hosted by Vercel, Vercel's domain name systems always respond with an Anycast IP address. And the way that you should think of an Anycast IP address is basically an IP address that represents multiple servers around the world. So multiple servers share the same IP address. So let's just quickly draw that out. Let's say we have four different servers, for example, they are all going to route to an Anycast IP address. And because that Anycast IP address represents the location of many different servers around the world, the Anycast IP address can respond with the server that is closest to the user. So here we have nearest to the user. All right, so now that Vercel's Anycast IP address has led us to the edge location server, Vercel calls it, which is just the server nearest to the user. This server acts as the gateway to a new container, which is Vercel's Kubernetes container. So the server now kind of forwards that request to Vercel's Kubernetes container. And in this Kubernetes container, there is a proxy, which is going to act as the middleman between the client request, which starts somewhere over here, and the server that's in this Kubernetes container. So let's write proxy here. This is going to be the proxy and the request gets forwarded to that proxy. There are some other things that are kind of worth mentioning that happen in this Kubernetes container, but they're not the most important to understand. But some other stuff that happened here is some DDoS protection. There's a firewall. There's a HTTP gateway that makes sure that it's not some kind of malicious request. Stuff like that all happen in here. But the most important part is that this proxy receives the request from the client before sending it on to some other server to be processed. So this is the middleman. And what the proxy is going to do, and this is where I learned the most, is it's going to ask the build container for a certain resource, depending on what the request of the client was or of the user was. So the proxy is going to check, okay, is the request a static resource? Is it an image or is it a function? And depending on that, it's going to go in the build container and find the provisioned resource. So most of the time, this could be, for example, a server component and the HTML that the server com component returns to the client. The proxy is going to check that request, see that it's a server component, so it's running on the Node.js runtime, which means that it needs to find a serverless function. Then Vercel's infrastructure is going to spin up some serverless function, which is stateless. It just runs one time, executes the code, returns the code to the client, and then disappears again. If you use the different runtime, then it will ask the build container for that function and so on. So that's kind of how it works. It provisions resources on a request base and spins up the server resources needed, only what is needed. So to really stress that point, even in Vercel's own documentation, they say that Vercel functions enable running compute on demand without needing to manage your own infrastructure, provision servers, or upgrade hardware. It's basically one big abstraction. So I hope that from this video, uh, you could learn something about serverless and edge time functions. Uh, I hope also these Kubernetes and AWS containers also made more sense to you. Um, and just in general, the infrastructure that Vercel relies on in order to deploy your application.
I also really hope that you have a better mental model of what a runtime is now, since that's a word that gets used quite often in web development. And if you understand what it is, it just makes way more sense why people use runtimes like Node.js API and how every programming language has its own runtime that it relies on. So if you enjoyed this video, just leave a like, hopefully subscribe. Um, last video went well, so appreciate you guys for that.